Out of the 350 plus videos on my channel, less than a handful of them discuss music. But two of those music focused videos garnered an unusually large amount of attention. Both videos were explanations for songs by the band Tool. With just two videos, I managed to get tens of thousands of subscribers. The effort to reward ratio for these two videos was staggering. If you compare it to the effort I've put into hundreds of videos on mental health, psychology, and video games, just as many people seem to know me for my two tool videos as they do for anything else I've discussed. It just goes to show the deep spiritual impact that this band has on people. Those who listen to Tool are on the same spiritual journey as the band, looking for higher forms of understanding, higher forms of being. All of us are ready to overthink and overanalyze until we achieve that ultimate divine goal, the separation of body from the mind. I think the majority of Tool fans will agree that the song Lateralis is what compels this analytical instinct most of all. It is the most complete, comprehensive statement of Tool's musical and lyrical ambitions. This is why, ever since I put out the first Tool video, people have been asking me to dig deep into this song. The problem is, I set a standard for myself that prevented me from doing so. As my regular viewers know, I refuse to do a video on something unless I can provide an original take. There are plenty of in-depth videos and articles analyzing this song's composition, covering every possible interpretation, every possible word spoken on the song by the band members. With that in mind, I saw no point in interpreting the song Lateralis. But then again, the album of the same name does not have as much of a clear, thorough explanation. I finally figured out a way to talk about the song Lateralis, and it's in the context of the full Lateralis album. By understanding the songs that surround the titular track, I think we can all get a greater appreciation and understanding of the spiritual journey that the band is taking us on. With this video, I intend to go through the album, track by track, providing the best information that I can about the music, the lyrics, and the two videos which accompany the album's singles. I will make sure to distinguish between factual information and subjective interpretation where necessary. Now, let's begin. Track 1, The Grudge. There are two meanings that one can derive from the album's title track. On the one hand, there's the obvious message that holding grudges is detrimental to one's physical, mental, and spiritual health. It's a commentary on the calculated pride one can take in holding a grudge against someone or something. The moral satisfaction, the false sense of righteousness that can come from feeling hate. In the worst cases, one's entire sense of identity can center around this grudge. These types of people tend to be close-minded ideologues or religious zealots, the kind that we will reference again when we get to track 5. That's the obvious meaning. But there's a little bit of religious symbolism that Maynard James Keenan uses in order to make his message more poetic. There's a reference to the planet Saturn in the song, about how Saturn ascends and when that happens, we need to choose between higher or lower values. Do we go for one or ten? Do we lift ourselves up like one lifts up a child, or do we let ourselves be dragged down like a stone? As for what this has to do with the planet Saturn, it relates to one of the song's final lyrics. Quote, Give away the stone, let the waters kiss, and transmutate these leaden grudges into gold. The properties lead and gold, as well as the word transmutate, are clearly related to the religious tradition of alchemy. In some alchemical traditions, the alchemist sought to transmutate lesser elements, like lead, into greater elements, like gold. Another thing that the ancient alchemists did was liken certain elements to planets. Lead, the lowest of the elements in alchemy, was linked with Saturn. This is because, at the time, Saturn was the furthest known planet in our galaxy. It was the furthest away from the Sun, which was linked with gold for obvious reasons. In order for the alchemical process to work, one had to start with the lowest, most undesirable element in order to transmutate it into gold. Though it represents the lowest of the low, it is only through lead that one could reach the highest of the high, which is gold. 
but one had to make the decision, just as someone who holds the most loathsome, painful grudges. Do we choose the number one and let the stone drag us down like an anchor? Do we clutch it like a cornerstone and base our entire identity off of our feelings of hate? Or do we observe our resentment and what it teaches us about our own shortcomings? By doing that, we would, in effect, choose the number 10 and elevate ourselves beyond the grudge to a higher state. When Saturn comes back around, like feelings of hate inevitably will, you will need to make that decision. Track 2, Eon Blue Apocalypse. The only information we have on this instrumental track comes from an interview that Tool's drummer, Danny Carey, gave to a publication known as Terrorizer back in June of 2001. He said that the name Eon was the name that Tool's guitarist, Adam Jones, gave to his dog. Carey says that the song was written in tribute to the dog because it suffered from bone cancer. It is unclear whether the dog's name was Eon or Eon Blue. It is also unclear what Apocalypse means, but Tool fans seem to have congregated around one simple theory. The Apocalypse infers the end of something. So it is reasonable to believe that Eon's quote-unquote Apocalypse was the cancer either coming to an end or the dog dying from cancer. Track 3, The Patient. The pain that comes from losing a loved one, or the pain that would birth a never-ending grudge, is the type of pain that would motivate the lyrics found in The Patient. That level of pain births the quintessential existential question, one that the rest of the Lateralis album will attempt to answer. That question is whether or not life is worth living, despite the pain it brings, and if that pain has any utility. When Maynard James Keenan asks, is this a test, he's asking whether there is purpose to the immense pain that he is suffering. There has to be. If there isn't, then he can't go on living. Therefore, Maynard chooses to wait it out, to be patient, in order to see if there will be any rewards to reap. The repetition of these words, wait it out, be patient, I must keep reminding myself of this, represents the tedium of dealing with consistent, unbearable pain. Lyrics, like, and I'm still right here, represent the consistent lack of reward that comes from dealing with pain. That lack of reward births that original question, is there any purpose to the pain? With the next track, we will begin to meditate on that question. Track 4, Mantra. Speaking of meditation, a mantra is a word or sound repeated to aid concentration in meditation. This type of meditation is the one used by Hindus and Buddhists, two religious traditions that we will reference again when we get to track 6 and 7. This track features a mantra type sound, and it happens to come from Keenan gently squeezing his cat. The sound was just slowed down in post-editing. Maybe if you listen to it on repeat, it would help you with your meditation. Track 5, Schism. The obvious meaning of the song comes from the basic definition of the word schism, a split or a division between strongly opposed sections or parties. As for what groups this song is referencing, the lyrics are just flexible enough to allow for a multitude of interpretations, but Despite that minor flexibility, the lyrics are clearly coaxing the listener to view the titular schism as religious in nature. If other Tool songs like Opiate and Eulogy are anything to go by, it's clear that Keenan has a distaste for organized religion. When Keenan says that he knows the pieces fit, he could be referring to a couple of things. On the one hand, it could be the fact that faiths like Christianity used to be united by a collective love for the same deity, but then they fragmented into different denominations on account of varying interpretation of scripture and systemic corruption in the church. Given their original unity on the basis of love, there must be a way to use love to bring these supposed lovers back together, to make them rise above their zealotry. There's another way one can interpret this, and it comes from the music video for Schism. In that video, we see a male and female humanoid communicating with each other in various ways, most of which seem ineffective. 
Towards the end of the video, these two beings attempt to merge with one another. The union of the masculine and feminine into one entity is a concept that has been pondered by various religions. For example, there's the androgynous primordial man known as Adam Kadmon in Judaism. It was only with the advent of our universe that this primordial man was split into masculine and feminine, resulting in the birth of humans. In other words, at one point in our cosmic history, these two irreconcilable opposites were unified until they fell away. The union of masculine and feminine is a concept that is also pondered in the next song, or next two songs. Tracks 6 and 7, Parable, Parabola. Here we begin to see Keenan attempt to answer the existential question posed by the patient. If the song lyrics and the music video are anything to go by, Keenan seems to believe the same thing that Bill Hicks does. It's the same thing that Hicks says at the beginning of the song, Third Eye. That we are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There is no such thing as death, life is only a dream, and we're the imagination of ourselves. Now, consider this lyric from both Parable and Parabola. We are eternal, all this pain is an illusion. That goes along well with Hicks's statement that there's no such thing as death. As for the nature of this one consciousness, I imagine it would be something like Carl Jung's conception of the collective unconscious, a concept that was inspired by the aforementioned Buddhists and their notion of a universal mind, and the aforementioned Hindus with their concept of Brahman. The aforementioned concept of Adam Kadmon is a variation of the same metaphysical idea, that all human beings emerged from the same primordial body. All human beings are bound to this one mind, this collective unconscious. As conscious egos, we are small extensions of that universal mind, and we experience the contents of that mind subjectively. Upon death, we lose our ego, our sense of self, and return to unconsciousness. We see this return to the collective unconscious towards the end of the Parabola music video. The man becomes aware of his link to the universal mind, to Brahman, to that single primordial body. When this happens, several religious symbols show up on screen. First, we see a blue eye and a pink eye enter his body. Going back to what I just said about the union of masculine and feminine in the Schism music video, we see that union happen here as well. The eyes swirl around the center of the body, activating the seven different chakras from Hindu tradition. They unify in the man's third eye, in the center of his forehead. Keenan was right. The pieces do fit. Once the two eyes merge in the third eye, the man's ego dissolves, and he becomes one with the collective unconscious. It doesn't matter how powerful a mortal you are. You could be a powerful, evil corporate businessman, but you are bound to the same mind as the impoverished workers you employ, and that mind is symbolized by the aforementioned Jung as a perfect circle. Track 8, Ticks and Leeches Aside from maybe track 10, this song has the most straightforward lyrics and meaning. The pain that Keenan referenced in The Patient is illustrated in all its horror with the song's penetrative percussion and violent vocabulary. The actions of so many people throughout Keenan's life were akin to that of ticks and leeches, consuming everything that gives him not only the ability, but the will to live. But with the knowledge that he is eternal, that there is so much more to existence than these lowly ticks and leeches, he will be lifted up like a child. But in order to achieve that enlightenment, he must meditate on the mathematical harmony of the universe and his place in it. Track 9, Lateralis. As I said at the beginning of this video, there are people who have done a far better job explaining the mathematical structure of this song, how the notes and the lyrics run parallel to the Fibonacci sequence. I'm sure if you clicked on this video, you are already aware of this. If not, allow me to recommend you a video by Polyphonic called How Tool Used Math to Create Lateralis. I will link to it in the description box below. 
The transcending of the mortal ego that we witnessed in the Parabola video is the process described in Lateralis, going beyond human inventions like reason to see the cosmos in all its infinity. Keenan wonders if it would be possible to ride the spiral, the pattern which infuses all of human existence, to places unknown. Not only that, he wonders if it's possible to do so while still being a human. Regardless, it is a process that he must take. He must seek greater personal heights, and thus greater personal meaning in order to justify his existence, and all the pain he has endured. So, like the man whose ego dissolves in the Parabola video, he opens wide to suck in the collective unconscious. He feels it move across his skin. He feels himself becoming one with the mathematical harmony of the universe as his ego dissolves. Where he will end up, he does not know. All he knows is that it will be new and grand. Track 10, Disposition. Following the profound spiritual journey that was taken with the previous song, one must take stock of their current state of being, of their disposition. Think about the first time you heard Lateralis. Think about the first time you recognized the genius behind its composition. After the song finished, how did you feel? How did you look at the world around you? How did you look at yourself? Think about how you might have reacted to the world around you after listening to that song. All of a sudden, you are much more aware of everything. Whenever something quote-unquote mentions itself, a human speaking, a bug buzzing, a wind blowing, you somehow feel more aware. When the weather changes, you somehow appreciate it a little bit more. I figured that the song disposition is the marination, the meditation, that must follow after listening to the song Lateralis. Observe the way you feel, and reflect on what that feeling tells you. Track 11, Reflection. After considering his disposition, Keenan must reflect on what he has learned. Where did he end up after he rode the spiral? Did he reach the end? Not yet, but he has come curiously close to the end, down beneath his self-indulgent pitiful hole. He finds himself in a sort of dream state, in a space of dark emptiness. Maybe this is what he really sought, complete annihilation, in order to not feel pain. But he realizes how pitiful such an existence would be, which provokes an equally pitiful reaction. But in his darkest moment, a voice speaks to him. It's the voice of the moon. It tells him that the light he possesses, the light that animates his ego, is not his own, just as the light of the moon is not its own. Rather, the light of the ego is only an extension of the infinite light of the collective unconscious. To quote what Keenan said in Lateralis, as below, so above. Upon realizing that we are all one mind, Keenan realizes that he must crucify his ego before it's far too late. If he fails, he'll become like a lifeless satellite, drifting through eternal lonely darkness. And so, he lets the light of infinity wash over him. It moves across his skin as he reaches out one last time. Track 12, Triad. This instrumental track is appropriately titled Triad for two reasons. The time signature for this song appears to be in 3-4. Some would argue it's 6-8, but given the title of the song, I think it's reasonable to believe it's in 3-4. But it's also appropriate because in the last song, we saw Keenan reaching out to the infinite. In many religions, it's not at all uncommon to describe this bright infinity as God. It's also not at all uncommon to conceptualize God as a trinity or a triad. This isn't exclusive to Christianity, with their triad of God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We see it in Buddhism. They have the triad known as the Trikaya, or Three Bodies of Buddha. Hinduism also returns to the discussion with their concept of the Trimurti, also known as the three most significant forms of Brahman. 
And speaking of Brahman, the dissolution of the Atman into Brahman is essentially the same idea as crucifying the ego in order to be one with the collective unconscious. My final proof that triad refers to religious trinities lies with the title of the last song on the record. Track 13. Faip de Oyed. Faip de Oyed in the Enochian language means voice of God. If Kenan is becoming one with the infinite light of consciousness, symbolized as a triad and often referred to as God, it makes sense that once that journey is over, Kenan would hear the voice of God. But what does God say? Well, I imagine it's as incomprehensible and imperceptible to us mortals as the reality of something like the collective unconscious, just as the song Faib de Oyed is hard to comprehend. It's also unpleasant to listen to, just as I imagine the disillusion of the ego would be unpleasant. Finally, if this is the voice of God speaking, who is it? What does he look like? The answer seems to be a sort of tongue-in-cheek joke, as we Tool fans often expect from the band. Taking a cue from people like H.P. Lovecraft, God appears to be an alien, hence the references to Area 51. If I missed anything, or got anything wrong, please let me know. That way I can address those mistakes in the comment section. Hopefully my analysis was to your liking. If it was, please give this video a like. Boy does that help me out more than you know. Also, if you like the work I am doing here, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put a link to my Patreon in the description box below. Until my next video, just remember, as always and as per usual, to stay yellow.